are in this very edge of self-realization that we need this push, this jump, this quantum leap into the fifth dimensional consciousness is to go beyond what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad, into the next level. And those ideas and those visions are the very ones that doesn't allow us to go into the oneness and to recognize the presence, that the presence is in everything and everyone simultaneously here. And then your spiritual third eye, it opens up. Your heart opens up. Because you're no longer operating from good and bad. It's tremendous explosion will happen into entering into the cosmic consciousness of entering into this other level of seeing everything from above of the good, the bad, what's righteous, what's not and rising above it and finally freeing yourself from all of that and being all of it yet not being any of it simultaneously which human mind cannot understand that how you can be all of it and not be any of it in one simple question who am I? And in that, the dissolution of the person, the dissolution of Zarathustra, of this person, an individual entity separated from the source, this person that all of his life was in separation, the sense of separation, that sense begins to disappear. The body is still here. The mind is here. The emotions are still there. The person operates on its conditioning and its DNA makeup. The body doesn't get enlightened. The mind doesn't get enlightened. The emotions don't get enlightened. That sense of separation is no longer there. And in the absence of that sense, there is oneness, which you realize it's always been there. Nothing you gained. You just realized your true nature and you're free forever. And in that recognition, comes tremendous amount of power. It begins to channel this tremendous, beyond imagination, love, silence. It's beyond imagination because it's not personal. It doesn't belong to one person. It's the universe begins to operate through you and transmit this love which is beyond anything we can imagine, anything worldly. All the worldly stuff are just indicating to that. It's just a little taste of it. It's like I have, you know, I'm just tasting a little bit of this water. It's not the whole thing. So all of a sudden you're going to have the whole thing to you. 
why settle for a little bit, a little, little taste of it when you can have the whole thing? Why should I settle for a little bit of a worldly love which is conditional and it comes and goes when I can be this infinite love always? When I can eradicate a life of fear, worry, and anxiety for a little material comfort for a very short period of time, when I can just be free forever, whether I have that material comfort or not, I can be freed. Why should I settle for that? That's selling myself short. For what? Going back and being a beggar when I'm the king? No. No. I will sacrifice everything for awareness and never sacrifice or compromise awareness for anything. Regardless of the price that I have to pay. That is my responsibility in this life. And that is, should be the attitude of the one who wants to arrive and wants to merge in with divine consciousness. If that attitude is not there, then you're not worthy. You're not ready. So, there are times that we also have to demonstrate our worthiness. It's not just one way, two ways. Am I worthy to receive your wisdom? Am I ready to receive your wisdom? Am I willing to die for you, for this cause, for this mission? Am I willing to die? What am I willing to give? A one time, I when I was searching, I was poor. I didn't have money. I was a hippie traveler. I go to India. <clears throat> I want to stay in India for as long as I can to be at the feet of my master. And there was one moment with Master Punjaji that he just blasted me. It was like I wasn't one of the favorites. I was never one of the favorites of the master. And I didn't understand it at that time because, you know, of course, jealousy comes and he's giving juice to other people and giving him love and attention. And I was not one of them. And one time in the morning, we used to go at 7 o'clock in the morning, we're in Lucknow, and normally I was there in the winter time, so it's cold. So you're all dressed up cold, you're standing in line waiting for the master to come at 8.30 in the morning, but you get there at 7 because you have to be there. So you get to get up at 5.30 in the morning, get ready, get yourself ready, eat something and go there and wait, and you're all waiting there. And finally the master comes and uh, the car comes and pulls over and he gets out of the vehicle. And he's just so sweet, namaste, but everybody. And I feel like he doesn't love me. 